I'm going to let that music, okay, get your big toe working. Nine-tenths of doing contras or quadrilles is enjoying the music. And you'll notice this morning at some of the sessions and here this afternoon, if you've been doing contras, that very strong phrase music. This happens to be Scottish from a young fellow named Gordon Petullo. Yeah, I don't know whether he's Edinburgh or not, but can you tell me by listening whether this is a jig or a reel? It's a reel. Why? Do you all agree it's a reel? It's either a jig or a reel. All right. If that's a reel, what's this? I think it's a jig. Oh, that's easy. That's a wall. That it was is the one you were looking for. Big it three. is big three. Okay, now what is this? I'd like you to know our panel. We'll start with the fair sex and have you meet Lanny McQuaid from Ohio. In the center is Bill Johnston from Skippick, Pennsylvania. And my far left, Art Seeley from New Jersey. Is that almost right? My name is Bob Osgood from California, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. And Just because I clap for you, Jerry, you don't have to clap for me. <laughs> oh, gracious. Um, the name of the game in uh, Contras is enjoyment, is fun. And this morning, I, or this afternoon, I'd like you to listen to each one of our panelists who are going to tell you a little bit of a concept of Contras. And then we're going to let loose with questions. We're going to do some dancing. How many of you uh, have never done a Contra before? Okay, you all have done, you have not done one. You have not done one, huh? I, I am never sure when people raise their hands how honest and sincere they are. Uh, how many of you call contras? Okay, how many of you who did not raise your hands and would like to call contras but do not? Okay, there are a couple of you. The majority of you know what contras are. The majority of you do call contras. So... We'll put it all together, and let's start with Lanny and have Lanny talk to you for a little bit. Lanny McQuaid, speaking in her native tongue and wearing shoes. Would you like to step up here? Incidentally, this is being taped, so if you have questions anytime, would you please speak into the microphone there or here, and always give your name and where you're from. Thank you, Lanny. Well, Bob suggested that I talk about the use of contemporary square dance figures in contra dancing and those of you who were here for the earlier session have already heard my opinions on it uh, and I did do two dances at that time which use some of the contemporary figures there are others there are some that I don't use my feeling is that there are some contemporary square dance figures which will fit very nicely into contra dances they fit the musical phrase exactly, comfortably. And they don't compromise the character of contra dancing. I feel that some of our modern square dance figures just don't belong in contras. So if I use one, it's because I feel that it will fit comfortably and belongs in contras. The flutter wheel I've used, and actually it's beginning now, it's appearing in many new contras that are being written. And it can be done in eight beats of music. It's a very comfortable figure. 
And I'd like to imagine that maybe back in the old days they did a figure something like that. Who's to say they didn't? They certainly could have. Um, because the contras were not prompted in those days. You know, the dancing masters taught the dance, and then the people danced them. So they didn't have to have a one or two beat word to throw out to tell them what to do. The dancers knew it. So I could visualize a dancing master teaching them the, the movement that we use for flutter wheel and saying, now that's a very nice figure. We're going to use that in a contra dance. But he didn't have to say flutter wheel. Uh, I have one with a, an explode the wave in it. I don't say explode the wave. I simply tell them to pass through, face in, pass through. And it fits comfortably into the music. The one we did the earlier session had what you might recognize as a peel and trade in it. And I know full well that no traditionalist would accept peel and trade. But I don't see why they couldn't say leaders cast. Goodness knows we use that term a lot in contra dancing. I've seen other dances that said cast a half, which is what we're going to have them do instead of a cast off. And then the trailers will do a partner trade. For the sake of calling, you can say peel and trade in two beats of music. But in order to do it the other way, you have to say leaders cast the other's trade. So it's much easier if we could say peel and trade, but that isn't even in the levels of, con of square dancing now anyway. So we might as well just continue to say cast and trade. Uh, zing. Zing, not by that name, but certainly the exact movement appeared back in the 1800s. We have dances that appeared in printed material in the 1800s that caused the dancers to do what you now know as a zing. And I'm sure there are others, and others, no others come to my mind right at this moment, but there are many others. So... That is my feeling on the matter. Thank you, Lanny. Uh, what would be your criteria then for a contemporary movement that you might use, as well as a traditional movement, uh, in contradancing? You you pretty well explained it, but would you would you like to spell it out? The thing fits so that you can get to an eight, you can get to a twelve or a sixteen. You'll come out with the music. That pretty much. Yes, I don't know how else to say it. Because some of today's music is excellently phrased. I don't know how many of you were here this morning, but uh, Dick Ledger was doing some examples of dancing to the phrase using different types of music, and it certainly did work out well. It was a lot of fun. Uh, okay, Bill. Bill Johnston has been dancing since 1803, and uh, he's into many varied parts of square dancing and contra dancing and round dancing. So here's his share. Well, at the risk of repeating myself to some of you who might have been here the last session, uh, I have a number of soap boxes I stand on now and again, but uh, one of them I came to this convention with is the fact that uh, a lot of callers are turned off from contras because they go to some opening, beginner session or something like that, maybe at uh, Caller Lab, maybe at the national conventions, <coughs> And all they get is some of the simple, easy dances, and they invariably are repetitions of right and left through, ladies' chain, circle, and star. And they get some sort of a notion, then, that this is all there is to Contra. And if that's all there is to Contra, uh, don't bother me. i got more important things to do. My dancers have to learn the latest flip de doop Now, we who are um, in the Contra know that we're not seeking complex choreography, but we are looking for something more than the ladies' chain and right and left through. But our real purpose in dancing contra is music, the love of the music, and the love of dancing to the phrase. Well, then this leads, in effect, to my second soapbox theme, which is many callers will say, gee, all right, somebody's asked me for a contra. Let me see, I saw those fellas do that. Yeah, I was a right and left through and a ladies' chain. That, that's easy, okay. So he gets up, but he has no concept of the idea that contra is done in phrase to the music, and he's supposed to call it ahead of the beat, 
And uh, so he doesn't do a proper job of calling contra, and he didn't particularly enjoy it, and certainly his dancers didn't enjoy it. So his dancers said to him, I didn't like that. Don't do that again. So he says to everybody else, my, call, my dancers say they don't like contra, so I'm not going to call it. We had a, which comes first, the chicken or the egg. It's a circle that comes back upon itself. And so those two themes interrelate. Uh, the, the caller thinks, A, that there's nothing more to it than these simple figures. And let me tell you, there are many, many more uh, dances that uh, have a lot of meat in them and can be a lot of fun to dance. And B, then, the caller who is a would-be contra caller must uh, put the time into it that he put into learning some of his complex choreography. He's got to put a certain amount of time into learning music, understanding the music, and understanding how he is going to get the calls out just ahead of the phrase so that the dancers can enjoy it by dancing with the phrase. Those are my two soapbox themes. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, Bill has uh, talked about using uh, contras that might provide a feeling of challenge and one of the things we realize about contras is they are not necessarily challenging because of the number of basics they include but because of the pattern and the choreography involved and maybe we'll get a chance to show some of that for the moment let's get our third member of our panel up here and from New Jersey, Art Seeley. Art will also speak in his native tongue wearing shoes. And uh, I'll just sort of mark time while you're getting up <laughs> as far as you know. Art Seeley. I do have a soapbox. I'm a maverick. I believe that conquers properly used can be of a very great importance in teaching a class of beginner square dancers. I believe that contras should become more difficult as you go along. I don't believe that you can teach extremely or even half tough contras to beginner contra dancers. So I'm afraid that I use modern figures. I have some in my case that have spin chain throughs in them, trade buys. Hey, can we turn that guy down a little bit? But, uh, and I believe in using any type of music. My wife, Anita, who's sitting back there, used to kill me if I used anything but traditional music. But when one of her heroes, Dick Ledger, came along and said, you can use any music you want to, she let me go. So I believe in using fairly modern music so that square dancers that you're trying to teach in class are familiar with what they've got. When they advance, fine, we'll use anything they want to dance. Thank you. Thank you, Art. I'm, a, I'm afraid that we're going to be bucking the, the sound. Um, the walls are not really soundproof, but we'll do the best we can. If any of you are having problems hearing, you might move up to the uh, front row. Um, okay. I would like to, uh, I'd like to try in a minute, having each one of the three demonstrate perhaps a little something about which they were speaking uh, with a line, because it's sort of evident here that quite a few of you are doing and calling Contras, and uh, I'll give them just a minute to be thinking about it. Um, I might just uh, suggest another thing. If you're having trouble with styling in your area, with smooth dancing, one of the best ways that we know of is bringing the group into dancing with music is with contras or quadrilles. I've kind of put them all together. Um, at a vacation institute that we run at Asilomar uh, twice a year, we always start off our 9 o'clock session every morning 
with an hour of contra dancing. And for the rest of the day, the people are dancing to music. And it's, it's kind of a nice way to start. We know a, a couple of callers who have workshops that they run, and they will always include in the workshop a session on styling, along with all the new workshop material. And several of these callers are using contras or quadrilles. Thank you. As, uh, as a means of enforcing the styling. Lonnie, would you like to, uh, to do a little dancing? Would you like them up as a duple that is crossed? You know the difference between a proper and improper, don't you? I always thought that it was something that was not done in, the, in nice circles if you were going to do an improper contra. But let's get six people, six couples up. And uh, let's call this the head of the line. And... Uh, and we'll figure you might take your jacket off if you would feel more comfortable. We only need uh, four more couples. Come on. Okay. If you've never done them before, don't don't hesitate because you've got people who will be uh, really watching you and caring for you as you go along. Good. That's half. That's three quarters. Do we have two more couples? Two more. Who would, would you like to join it? Right behind you. Is there uh, is there another couple? Is there another single lady who would like to dance? Oh, we've got enough now. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's go ahead with six to begin with, Art, and see what happens. Okay, Lanny, it's all yours. Uh, will you... Right. Please, beginning up here at the head of the set, will you cross couple number one, couple number three, and couple number five? Every other one is crossed over. Those of you who crossed over, consider yourself to be the active people. Keep in mind that this is up the set, and that is down. This is not considered a difficult dance, but and I didn't notice whether any of you have said you are not contra dancers, we had better take somewhat of a look at it because although it's not difficult for contra dancers, if by chance some of you are not familiar with contras, we might need to take a look at it. So, act is with the people below you or with your corner, just the one person who is facing you, turn by the right hand or a pigeon wing up. Now by the left, go all the way around a little bit more until you can chain that lady across the floor. Go a little bit more around so that the, this first couple here towards me, yes, so that the lady can chain across the floor. You'll have to sort of adjust, make it a sort of a courtesy turn there. All right, you chain the lady across. Now, those same two ladies, please step in facing each other. You can join right hands if you will because that's what we're going to do next. Before you start, notice one of you is facing that blank wall over there. The other one is facing towards me. Each one of you ladies. Now this will not be true of the ends, ladies. This is one of those things about contras. When you get to an end of the line, you're going to be idle. So I'm talking to the other ladies. If you look to your left, there's a new corner over there. That man to your left right now is a new corner. Up here at the head and down at the foot, when you get out there, you're just going to turn and face your own partner and, and wait because you're in that period of being idle. All right, the ladies now turn by the right all the way around a little bit more. Go to that corner man I named and do a dos a do with him and step into an ocean wave across the floor. Good, I was afraid you'd put it on the diagonal. Excellent, thank you. Now we're going to balance forward and back. Do it twice. That's a total of eight counts. Now, pass through face in those same people pass through again now either a courtesy turn with that same person and then half promenade cross at the head and cross at the foot that's all there is to the dance the serious part is that the ladies find that new corner because she is in a turning process she might not realize but it will be the man to her left diagonally to her left and the ladies coming out on either end will just have to stand there and wait a little while until we cross them over and they start over again do you think you're ready for the music or is there still a problem 
Okay. okay. Did you have a question, though? Is this a double pro progression? Yes. Uh, Do you all know what a double progression means? Is there anybody who doesn't? Does that mean the top and the bottom? The, the question was, do you all know what a double progression is? If you didn't, you raised your hand. Lenny, would you just explain what a double progression is? A double progression means that you have moved two places, either up or down the line. The so-called active people are moving down the line. The inactive people are moving up. Most dances, you only move one spot. But there are some dances which will move you two spots within each sequence. Now, when we say sequence, that means 64 beats of music, or usually eight figures. Normally, you will only progress once during those 64 beats. But this particular dance, and there are some others, you will progress two spots, either up or down the line, depending on whether you are active or inactive. This one moves you twice, which means that we have to cross up the head and the foot every time through. A single progression, you will only cross at the head and the foot every other time through. So you will be crossing at the head and the foot every time. In case I fail to cross you, you know that you will. All right. It's with your corner or the one below you, and it's just that one person you're working with. With your corner, right hand turn. Back by the left, once around and a little bit more. Those ladies chain. Same ladies turn by the right, once around and a little bit more. Find a new corner, do sa do. Now balance twice. Pass through, face in, pull by, wheel around. I'm sorry. This is not the piece of music I wanted to use, and it doesn't feel right to me. So let me check my notes here. Ah, excuse me. May I turn the record over? I'm sorry. If you were mixed up, it probably was my fault because I was worrying about the music. Now, we should be... Uh, yep. Yeah. Hmm. We've, you, you got changed and it's entirely my fault so please forgive me to make it simple let's put all the men on the other side and the lady on this side now the first third and every other one cross over please agreeing that I fouled up is there any problem that you would like to straighten out before we go again if I do it right will you be all right <laughs> All right. With your corner, right hand turn. Now by the left. Those ladies change. Same two ladies. Turn by the right, once around and a little bit more, find a new corner, do sa do. Across the floor, ocean wave and you balance twice. Pass through, face in, courtesy turn, wheel around and half promenade. Apparently I need to explain it a little more carefully. And I'll explain why I'm doing that particular figure. Will the first couple up here cross over, please? Now the gentleman you no, the gentleman should be on this side. Lady man. Cross at the foot, please. Now with your corner, right hand turn. Now by the left. Go once and a half. And those ladies chain. Same ladies. Step into the center and join right hands. Notice again that you're going to the man who is diagonally to your left, over there in the other line. And lady, don't worry, you're not going to meet anybody. You're just going to go out there, turn around, and wait. Those ladies who have found somebody over to your left, turn. those two ladies turn by the right. One full turn, find a man diagonally to your left, do sa do, and across the floor, 
make an ocean wave. Balance twice. If I told you explode the wave, what would you do? Step through, face in, pull by. Courtesy turn, half promenade. That means you promenade over to the other side and then passing left shoulders. If I called explode the wave, would it be less troublesome for you? All right, now cross at the head and cross at the foot. I don't want to say explode the wave because this is the point. We don't want to use these modern terms, but you're doing the same thing. You were in an ocean wave, you would step through, face in, pass through or pull by, and then I will want you to do a courtesy turn in order to do a half promenade. All right, face your corner. Right hand turn. Now by the left. Those ladies change. Same two ladies, turn by the right. Once and a half. Do sa do with the person on your left. Ocean wave and you balance twice. Step through, face in. Pull by, courtesy turn. And half promenade. Cross at the head, cross at the foot. With the new corner, right hand turn. Now with the left. Go once and a half. And the ladies chain. The same two ladies turn to the right. New corner, do sa do. Make an ocean wave and balance twice. Step through, face in, pull by. Courtesy turn and half promenade. Cross at the head and foot. New corner, turn to the right. Now with the left. Go once and a half. And the ladies change. Same two ladies, turn to the right. Go once and a half, find a new corner, do sa do. Make an ocean wave and balance twice. Step through, face in, pass through, courtesy turn and half promenade. Cross at the head, cross at the foot, brand new corner, right hand turn. Now with the left. Go once and a half, and the ladies change. Same two ladies, turn by the right. Go once and a half, find a new corner, do sa do. Make an ocean wave and you balance twice. Step through, face in, pull by, courtesy turn and half promenade. Cross at the head and cross at the foot and let's bow to our partners and we'll stop there. That was smooth. Stay up just for a second. What was the name of that, Lanny? West Coast Storm. And who wrote that? I just. <laughs> <laughs> that was very smooth. Can we explain the reason for the title? Yes, go ahead. As you see, it has an explode the wave in it. Put the dance together some time ago, a couple of months or more. I didn't have a name for it. But when I watched the television pictures of that terrible storm on the West Coast and I saw those waves crashing or exploding upon the piers and the other buildings, I thought, there's the title for that dance. Thank you again. Now, do you, do you have energy to try one more? Do you? Uh, those of you who are not in, we'll get you in in a minute if you'd like to be. But while we're still up, Bill, would you like to, to tackle a, a session with the uh, people? It's sometimes just as beneficial to watch and to make a few notes if you'd like to. And if there's anybody here who wants to substitute somebody in your place, be sure they're willing to come in before you sit down. Bob, I have something I'd like to say here, Bob. Go ahead. And that is, Bill can handle this. This morning, during the session, I heard a question asked. This afternoon in the session, I heard the question asked. I just now heard the mumble again. I'd like to help these people. You, know, you guys can do it, you folks. You get a contra line formed, all of a sudden from nowhere comes this extra couple. Now, we as callers don't want to say, will you go sit down because uh, we, we don't want you. Bill can handle an odd couple on the end. The question was asked this afternoon, what do you do if you don't have even numbers? 
I think we should talk about that because we have callers here who are spending enough time with us this morning and this afternoon to indicate that they do want the knowledge. Good and point. I think that is something that we should be working with. Good point. And uh, if you need, uh, I'll serve as an odd couple on the end. I'll take Lonnie with me or somebody. Now, that's another thing. When you do form a contra line, protect yourself. Be sure that all your good dancers aren't the first three couples up at the head of the line and the, and the tail end is dangling like this because you're going to have trouble. Get some key personnel who will fill in the back end and help you down there. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, did Bill leave? or? Oh, hi, Bill. Uh, I might just say, uh, sort of tagged onto that, the one you just did was a double progression. We have an odd person in a double progression. You have to think it out a little differently than an odd couple in a single progression. So, Bill, it's all yours. This is Bill. Yeah, well, all right. What I had in mind doing was a triple that's all right. Don't worry about it. Because uh, you can do them with as many couples as you want. Uh, this triple that I wish to do is not real difficult. Uh, Sackett's Harbor, it's called. Old traditional dance. In the old days, people just learned it by watching or jumping in and doing. And we're going to do much the same. Uh, it is dance proper, so we won't be crossing over anywhere. There is one thing about a triple, and I'll explain to it as we go along. Uh, that is when you get to the bottom of the set. Uh, you don't wait out immediately. You have to dance with a ghost down there. And that's the one unusual thing about dancing triples. All right, so to dance a triple, let's take hand six from the top. And you've got three couples in a dancing set. They need to cross back over, I think. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, I did say proper, but I didn't tell you get proper. I'm sorry about that. Proper means all the men in one line, all the ladies in the other. Improper means you are crossed. All right. Yes, you are now proper. All the men on their side, all the At ladies. At this on point, Bill, explain to those people that we are the first couple of the next three, and to watch, let them watch to see how this progresses, how this will build up on this end. Okay. This end is important for these people because they're asking those questions. That's right. Okay, there is the odd couple down there. Did I say that right? <laughs> uh, very pretty good looking couple, aren't we? All right, they, they are the odd couple down there. And right now, this is their rest turn. They start off with a rest turn. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about the, the figure and the progression. And we'll just do a little bit of walking if you don't mind. The dance will start six on the sides, join hands, and go forward and back. And then... Six hands circle to the left, but you go only three quarters of the way around, which is going to make lines in the other way. Stop right about there. Okay, we got all the boys looking up to the top, all the girls looking down to the bottom. And we're going to dance like a contra in this line. So the lead couple, number one, who is at the far end over there, you're going to take your partner and promenade down through the center of your line. And then you're going to turn alone and promenade back. And with that couple that you find there at the end of the line, walk around them, just you all by yourself, and get in between them and the next. Good. All right, this is your progression right there. Now then, we're going to do a little figure called Contra Corners. Okay, a little figure called Contra Corners. Lead couples that are standing there in the middle. Look, uh, point your finger straight across to your partner. And then let that finger wander to your right. There is your first corner. All right, point back to your partner. Wander that finger to the left. And there is your second corner. The rest of you watch that because you're going to have your turn ultimately. All right, the lead couple, give right hand to your partner and cross over to that first corner. That was to your right. Turn them by the left. Meet your partner back in the middle and turn by the right hand and go to your second corner and turn them by the left and then just slide right back to that slot where you started. That is the figure called Contra Corners. All right, the lines of six go, the lines of three go forward and back and join six hands, circle to the left, left, three quarters, uh, right, I'm sorry. Yeah, circle right. <laughs> I'll get you right. Back to the boys' line and the girls' line and spread it right out, boys and boys and girls and girls. All right. Now, here's the trick in triples. Which was the lead couple? Raise your hands. Step to the middle. 
All right, everybody wants to know who you are. That leaves a couple up here at the top with nobody to dance with, and you're going to get your rest period. This lead couple is going to get the next two below them for their new triple, join hands. And that lone couple that was standing in down there at the bottom finally has somebody to dance with them. Show them the shape before we did that. Go back. Watching the eyeballs over there. Show how that happens. Your active couple. Yeah, the active couple is going to immediately look below and get the next two people with them. All right? And they're going to join hands on the side and go forward and back. Let's go through it quickly. Circle with the left, have three quarters of the way around. All right, lead couple down the center. And turn alone and come back and cast off around the, first, the top people there. Get around them. Let's just go through your corners one more time. Partner by the right. Your first corner by the left. Partner by the right. Second corner by the left. Back to your own little slot there. And go forward six and back. Circle six hands to the right. Right, right. Now here we got to watch something else again. Can that lead couple get the next two below you? Yep. Next two below. Yep. you got to say, hey, guy, come on, hurry up, get up here with me. And here's the trick. This couple down here at the bottom, they only had one couple left. They don't have another couple down there. But they must dance, pretending there is a third couple in their set. They're going to pretend that they're there. Dance the whole dance. If you do not do that, you do not accomplish a progression and you'll be down there at the end forever and ever. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now we got two couples up here at the top. This is one reason why I uh, don't particularly like triples. Uh, I mean, it's the only reason that I have against triples. Put it that way. You've got to wait up here twice at the top before you can begin again. So you get another rest period, all right? This next new group then go forward six and back. And circle of the left, three quarters of the way around. Lead couple down the center. And turn alone, come back. Now you notice those odd people down there at the bottom, they're going to turn around there, but they still got a ghost that they're going to dance with. All right, you think you know your, your counter corner, we don't have to do that. But I'd just like you to watch the group down here, because they've got to do counter corners with a ghost. So watch them do that. Turn your partner right, and first corner by the left. See, Dick has a ghost. Turn your partner by the right. Now, Anita has a ghost. You see that? And you get back into your lines. All right. You did your counter corners here, okay? All right. Let's go forward six and back again. And six hands, circle to the right. All right. Lead couple. Get those next two below you. You got them? Get those next two below you. Go forward six and back. And lo and behold... We got a group of three up here that can dance to the music too. And we got that odd couple down here at the bottom that gets their rest turn. So we're going to start right from here. Do you think you know your counter corners okay? All right, okay. Here we go, let's see how it works. <coughs> All right. On your partner on the chord, then forward six. Forward six, and back, six hands, just circle to the right, left, 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 three quarters of the way around, lead couple down the center, go, turn alone, come back, cast off, now turn corner, corners, partner right, and first corner by the left, and your partner by the right, second corner left, hurry, hurry, now forward six, get back to your slot, forward six, Circle to the left, three quarters. Jeez, oh, oh boy. Get a new group, go forward six. Circle left, left, three quarters of the way. Lead couple down the center. We're running a little late here. Turn alone, go back. And cast off around one. Now do your counter corners. Your partner right, first corner by the left. Partner right, hurry, hurry, second corner by the left. Get back to your slot. And forward six, you got it. And circle to the right, three quarters. <laughs> Get a new threes. Go forward six. You got to wait at the hitch, yeah. Circle to the left, three quarters round. And now at the bottom, you're playing with a ghost, remember? Lead couple down the center. Turn alone, go back. Cast off around one. Wait for the phrase. Contra corner, go. Partner right, first corner left. Partner by the right. Second corner left. You gotta hurry here a little bit. 
get back to your slot and forward six. Now circle to the right. Be ready on the heads. You're going to have a new group ready to go. All right, go forward six. And circle to the left three quarters round. Lead couple, come down the center. Turn it alone, go back. And cast off. To cut to corner, partner right, first corner on the left. And your partner right, second corner left. Back to your slot. Go forward six. Circle to the right. Get a new threes. Now it's four steps forward. Four steps back, circle them. Three quarters, and down the center lead couple. You turn alone and go back home. Cast off. Not to corners, but your right first corner left. Back to your slot and it's forward four steps. One, two, three. Now back to three. Circle go. Get those four steps in. Do threes. Go forward six. That's a bit last. And circle left. Well, that couple just got up there to the top. We won't disappoint that lead couple down the center. Turn alone. Come back down at the foot. You're dancing with a ghost. Remember, cast off. Go forward. And turn guard to corners. That's it. That ghost is there. Now forward six. Four steps. Ah, you only did two. Circle right. Long at the head. We'll do it one more time for you. Forward six. Oh, the orchestra says no. They quit. Union Orchestra. Sorry about that. Why can't we dance with a ghost at the head? That's a good point. Uh, it won't work. If you do a ghost at the head, you'll be knocked out of progression at the bottom. It's, it works differently. Let me, Bill, thank you. Let me suggest you sit down for a minute and breathe because we have Art uh, Seeley coming up in a minute and I'd like to provide him with a fresh group. Yes, Lanny, uh, you, you may say something. Regarding the question of um, those extra people on the end, if you have an uneven number, particularly in the case of those slant to the left dances like um, slanch to Donegal and there are a number of others where you slant to the left I've always heard it said you have to have an even number of couples but it's possible to put that extra couple on the right hand line then when they slant to the left they get picked up so you don't absolutely have to have an even number if the dance is a slant left type dance. Yes. If I may make a comment on that, if you, uh, I, you're familiar with Portland Fancy. Yes. And I have found it very convenient to split that in, instead of using lines of four to break it into lines of two and have a great big long line up and down, you make variations of Portland Fancy that way. Mm -hmm. And doing that, you can have any number of couples. As long as you have a facing couple at one end, You'll have a couple that comes out, faces the wall, and all they do is a partner trade face back in and wait until the pass through comes and they get re-engaged again. So that it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And with Portland Fancy, when you have, whether you have an even number or not, when you have a couple left over down there at the end, either pass through twice so that you always pick up the people, or the two couples that make up the line of four, if they bend the line, they're facing a couple, and they can do all the figures that the other dancers are doing in Portland Fancy, then when they pass through, they wheel towards the action, whichever direction that is. It'll be right on one end and left on the other, and everybody gets started again. You don't have to have anyone standing out on that particular dance. Did you have a question, Stu? Just a comment on what Mike said. Sort of follows what he says. Thank you. Uh, on the... Uh, Portland Fancy that you uh, just mentioned going into contralines from a circular pattern that was written for you made the conversion that way you can convert back the other way gives you a great variety while we're getting our breath um, I'd like to bring up a couple little points uh, in observing maybe you notice that Bill was emphasizing four steps Go, two, three, four, back, two, three, four. Um, you know what this is? I'm leaving the mic. 
That's a balance. Four count total. A one, two, three, touch, back, two, three, touch, is forward and back. And there is a difference. There are many times that we balance in contras, and there are many times that we go forward and back. And it's always important. Let me do, Lenny, may I borrow you for a second? Let me just point out a couple other things. Uh, one of the, one of the things that's important for the, for the joy of contra dancing is knowing in, in styling arm turns. Any kind of a turn or a swing has a pivot point between the joined hands or between the point right directly between the two people. So if we're turning, if I have the girl turn around me and sort of shove her to get out of the way, you're turning with a pivot point in my head. But if we adjust so that we're turning equally around that, you feel a satisfaction when you're not dancing with a dead fish, and it makes it much easier to dance. The other thing is a balance. Let's try, well, let's try this for a second. Balance. And you feel it here. Let's try it this way. There's, there's really an elbow push, but try it here, and you've got springs in your arms so that you're balancing. And when you're teaching contras, many times when you do Shadrach, the light, or anything in a balanced way, the automatic reaction of contemporary square dancers is to kick a field goal. And there's no satisfaction. Keep a, a narrow base underneath and feel good. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to dance with you. Never bear their soul. Don't bear your soul. <laughs> That's very good. The other thing, if you ever, while you're supposed to be dancing, if the calls are going to you and you ever find yourself standing, you're doing something wrong. A good contra will flow from one movement to the next, and you will finish on an eight count if that's the way the contra is built, and you'll start on the next without a stop. You'll roll from one to the other, and you'll get a great satisfaction out of doing that. Uh, just a few things in, in observing as you were dancing. Uh, balances. Um, we, we mentioned this, but there are a lot of balances where there's step kicks, and there, there are many where you just do a gentleman, and when you do hills of Habersham, you may do a waltz balance. But balances are a part of it, and they're fun. And if you go into a contra club or you're working workshops, it's kind of nice to show the differences in these. Art, do you think I've got them rested enough? I don't know. <laughs> We'd like a, a contra line if, uh, if you feel you've got your breath back so that Art Seeley can have some fun with you and show you something that we haven't done yet. With Yes, sir. And if you have time, could I just say, uh, would it be possible to see a, a demonstration of a circle contra? I know they're done. I've never seen one done, though, and I was just curious as to how it works. It, uh, we, could, we could describe a cir uh, circle contra. Many circle contras are simply... Contras like Shadrach's Delight or Aston Polka or any of those simply done in couple facing couple, either clockwise or clock, counterclockwise around the hull, or one couple with their back to the center, one with their back to the wall like Pretoria, which are circle contras. But you can do so many dances that are regular, for instance, duples, and you can do them in a large circle. Yes, Bill, would you grab a mic? Uh, just to answer the question over here, another way to visualize this circle that you ask to see, you take a long contra line, it is in effect an infinite line if you want to look at it that way, but you take this end of the line and that end of the line and fold them around to where they meet. And then you have a circle contra. It'll work the same way. What is the head of the line, the way we danced it here, is connected to the foot of the line down there, and there is never any waiting out then because you always have somebody to meet and dance with. Art, you, you're ready to say something? Bob, if we could move those chairs out, I'll, I'll do a circle. I, I, oh, do we have enough people to I do one? I need once? ten couples. How, can I get ten couples? Sure, you can. Let's let's try a circle contra. Will this group of people move their chairs to the back, please? And then everybody who is awake and well, if if you would grab a a partner type individual, 
and make a big circle, he, she, he, she, he, she, all the way around. Somebody's got a coffee cup that's going to dance. Great. Couple facing couple would uh, probably be a, an improper duple, wouldn't you say? Couple. Fa- okay. All right. Let's make a big circle. Come on, let's get the rest of it. You're permitted to dance. You're encouraged. Oh, absolutely. Grab a girl. I'm sorry, I did. Anybody else? Is there a, a single, is there a loose lady in the crowd? Yeah, loose There's a couple of us sitting here. Would you? Thank you. Bart's wife is a loose lady. Barely. Come on, you, you wanted to get in, get in here. Okay. Promenade. Stu, move up alongside the next couple. Promenade. Four in line. Bend the line. Two ladies chain. You're now set to go. Can we get another couple up so they don't <coughs> yes, with Give me one more couple, please. Either of the two lone gentlemen uh, would like to uh, grab a part of time on that arc. We'll move over this way. Yes, excuse us. Welcome to the There we go. Okay. Face your corner. Dose the door. Yes, <laughs> Same girl swing. Put her on the right. Do a right and left through. Right and left back. Courtesy turn and a quarter more. Promenade around the floor. Wheel turn. Come on back. Bend the line. Two ladies chain. Chain back. And there's no crossovers. Okay. I did this in the last hour in a straight line, so I thought I'd be a good, uh, good one to show as a. This time I'll use the proper music. Don't help! Don't hit me, Bill. Face your corner. Come on, boys. Don't sit up. Take your time. Same girl swing. Eight beats. Put her on the right. Face across. Right and left. Right and left. Courtesy turn and a quarter. Promenade. Wheel turn. Come on back. Bend the line. Two ladies chain. Swing. Put her on the right, right and left. Right and left, courtesy turn and the quarter promenade. Wheel turn. Come on back, bend the line. Two ladies chain. Does that answer the man's question? Thank you. All right, thank you. Now, hold it just a second. Thank you, Art. Let's, let's try one where you're not with the back to the center or the back to the wall, but the person you're facing to a star through. Okay, now you've got your own partner. One has her back to the center, and one is, I mean, one is facing clockwise and one counterclockwise. 
Okay, uh, step to a wave. And uh, balance, go up, turn right hand half, bend in the center and balance. Turn left hand half and swing your own. Okay, put her on the right, all face clockwise. You got a digital watch. <laughs> Sometimes when you this Yeah, you've got a digital watch. Huh? Yeah. Okay, promenade. We lose a couple. In lines, promenade back. Cast off three quarters. Centers go forward, outside, hold your pivot. Do a rack left, do a rack now. Rack left. Rack left. Rack left. <laughs> Two ladies chain. Oh, face your corner. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that would be a progression in using uh, a just Shadrach's delight, which would you mean you'd progress this way? You'd be with your partner, and you'd do the whole thing over. And as long as you had an even number of dancers, nobody would ever be an actor. Is there any other ones, Stu, that we ought to do while we're in a circle? Uh, Ashton Bolton. Yeah. Okay. Well, Pretoria would put us back. Let's uh, face your corner without screaming, get in butterfly, two hands. And man's left and lady's right, heel toe. Ready? Heel and toe and out to three, and a heel and toe and in again. Heel and toe and out. Heel and toe, and the ladies only go in. Right. And the men stay away. Now we've got four tracks. Face the person you're with. We've got a man nearest the out, uh, nearest the center, and a man nearest the inside. Yeah, go ahead and make an ocean wave for a second in your four. Great. All right. Now let go of your ocean wave, and you've got a track set. You're going to walk six steps and turn seven and eight and come back to this same girl or same man. Ready? Walk. Go. Two. Three, four, five, six, and you turn. Come back to the same lady, pigeon wing, left hand, alamand, left. Two ladies, chain. Chain back. Star left. Star right. Face new corner, and you're ready to go. And that many, many contras can be converted from a line to a circle, and they work out well. This gets even easier if the circle is bigger. Yeah. What? We're having a little trouble here and there in the center circle running into people. It's yeah. Like, it gets even easier if the circle is bigger. You don't have that trouble. Right. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And you can do, uh, you know what a mess glance is? Yeah. Okay. Four facing fold. And you usually do them up and down the ladder quite frequently. You can do a four facing four in a large room. And there are a number of ways to progress. So you can do a mescalanza without really ever running out of people. So that's just one more. One thing about contours is the variety. Number one, the music. Number two, the pattern. You, you do this dance in a line. Two minutes later, you do it with different music in a circle. Brand different bands. So a caller makes up very well in doing contras because with knowing a few, he has a lot by just using variety. Let's listen to that soapbox. <laughs> um, Art, box. thank you. Well, you have a microphone for that. Oh, uh, I would like to have I'd like to have a contra line for a minute. Uh, just six couples, preferably men and women. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, to the tape that I did some of that without actually um, talking on the mic. It's it's no more time, is it? Well, let let me just show you one quick thing. Oh, do we have till uh, whatever? Gracious. Okay. Uh, let's make it improper. The first, third, fifth crossover. We'll call it a duple cross. Okay. I'm going to leave the microphone. No, I'm not. Face your corner without screaming. Okay. And let's, uh, let's do a dosado all the way around to an ocean wave with the hands up. And there's no balance. Okay. Turn right hand half. Now the ladies just simply stay there. And then watch your ge geometry. Turn left three quarters. So we've got a line up the center. 
Okay, now which is your right hand? Turn right hand half. If you're on the ends, just stay there. Now turn left three quarters. Okay, and there you're in waves. What is the movement you just did? You did a spin chain through without having to be told. All right, men run right. Just halfway around. Girls just fudge over a little bit. Bend the line. And ladies, to your right across the set chain. If you're dead at the end, don't do anything. Straight across. Do a flutter wheel. Now this times out beautifully, the flutter wheel bit. All right, just keeping the one hand joined that you have now, half promenade. Now, why did I do that? Gracious, do a right, left, back. <laughs> okay. Everybody pass through. All by yourself, individually, do a left face turn in four steps. Join hands in a long line. And you should have all progressed one. Did, did I follow it up in any way? And that is a double progression, and it's using a, it's using a contemporary dance without naming it. Lanny was talking about using movements that are contemporary. And here's one way to work with people and give them dances, uh, movements that are a little bit uh, more complex without giving them a name that might scare them. Uh, while you're up and while they're crossed over, Lenny, would you be willing to do that hat deal? Uh, remember Bob Howell's hat, Man in the Hat, or... Oh, was it you who did it the other night, Bill? Yeah. Uh, would, would you do it? I'd like to show you a contra that uh, Bob Howell wrote, a contemporary. Do you have, can it work with any jig or reel? Okay. Would somebody like to dance in there other than me? Great. This, this little dance... Well, like many of the older, well, like many of the folk dances, uh, tells a story. It was written about a man who is very wealthy, and written about uh, he has money in oil wells, and he and his uh, wife put on a show each year uh, for was it the bell, the little bell choir. Everything that they did was written into this deal. So we have contemporary contras that somehow tell stories too. But uh, both Lanny and Bill know much more about that than I, but it's a delightful thing because it's very different. They're in a duple that is crossed, Bill. How about that? One of you had a question while Bill was just sort of squaring himself away. One of the ladies, do you remember? Uh, uh, I was just going to add a bit of <clears throat> wisdom. I'm Mary Jenkins from Silver Spring, Maryland, which is a suburb of D.C., and I uh, wanted to say, uh, as to contras in the line, that Evan uses uh, uh, Lancashire Barn Dance always at a one-night stand. That's the nice one-night stand, kids. And uh, uh, the uh, dancers then uh, very easily get into the Virginia Reel, which we always do in memory of George Washington. Thank you. That's great. And the Jenkins are really part of history as far as I'm concerned in square dancing. And it's fun to have them here. Okay, let's see how we make out here. This is not exactly an easy dance, but let's have a go at it. Um, we are alternate duple. Uh, first lady in each of your duple groups is going to cast off but your partner is going to follow you he'll play follow the leader so I'll tell the first lady what to do and the man follow your partner first lady cast off that is to say just turn up and out and go around behind the, guy, the man that's below you man follow man follow her man follow her hey hold it hold it hold it I said her partner will follow her now you got ahead of me, though, in, in the process. We want you to come below that person and go right across the middle of the set. Go right across the middle of the set. Straight across, straight across. And then turn to your right and go down behind the next person. And come in the middle and face up. 
Uh, I don't know who's acting who there. Uh, we had the extra couple. Is you that it? One more couple down there, Bill? Oh, uh, yeah, it might help then. Yeah. You got to work with a ghost when you go around them down there. That's all. That's all. I think you better come back to where we were. And let's see. Art, yes. All right. Art, you are um, an active couple, but you have to use a ghost down there. All right. So, first lady followed by your partner, cast off, go around that second man, come all the way straight across the set, and cast down one more. Down. Down. And then face up in the middle. Gents, you'll have your lady on your left. All right. You promenade up the center to that couple you first casted off, and you're actually going to cast off around them. So they'll face up with you and just go three-quarters of the way around, and the lead couple now is one place down, and you're going to dance with the next couple below. Make sure I have that. Yeah, with the other hand. The other hand that you used from the cast off. Did I make that clear? Yes, you will. Um, step to the middle again and face up. Lead couple, step to the middle and face up. This is where you were coming up the center. And you're going to meet... The, these other people who will face up with you and you're going to do a cast off hold hands with them and cast off now use the other hand to go to the next people below you the the other hand the other hand and Betsy you're going to use your other your left hand or your yeah your left hand you left and you're going to turn that person turn that person once around and come back to the couple that was above you the ones you did the cast off with and make a right hand star with them. Right hand star. In the center. Right hand star. Turn once around and then hold it. Hold your star. Hold your star. Because we're going to ask the two ladies to chain. But ladies, you already have your hands in the center. So man, turn to your left and flare outward to meet the lady coming at you for a courtesy turn. And chain her back. Oh, don't chain back. Don't chain back. Sorry. We're going to do that old flutter wheel figure here. So ladies, give your right hands back in the center, but pick up the other man, take him home with you, and the flutter wheel. And then do a right and left through. We have completed the figure, and we're ready to go again, but the leads have progressed one place, and ready to cast off again. Question, Question about the cast off. You said with the other hand. Is it an arm turn left to left, or is it uh, something else? Because... The other hand that I was using from the cast-off was um, my right hand. Some of you will have the same hand, same hand. But we're talking to the lead couple when we're saying with the other hand. Is it just the ladies? I mean, just the ladies will use the same hand. What hand the left does? See, she's using left hand in the cast-off here. Yeah. And she's holding him down there with the left hand. Well, it's just left hand the left hand. She'll use the same hand. The men will change the other hand. Uh-huh. Because if the man is doing the cast off, he's using right. But if he goes below with the left, the ladies would have to use the left. The ladies have to change hands, right? Let's give it a try. Yeah, give it a try. All right. You want to erase? I think you better erase. Go to where you were familiar with. I think maybe we better take one more quick walk because some of you may have forgotten what we were doing in all the midst of the discussion. So listen carefully. First lady cast and her partner will follow. Straight across the set and cast below one more. Come into the middle, promenade up the center, and then cast off of those people hand to hand. Use your other hand with the people below you for another turn and come back to the people you cast it off with for a right hand star. Oh, once around. Then the two ladies chain. Men, you just do a little flare. And then we'll do a flutter wheel. And then we'll do a right and left through. And that first lady cast off again. Be ready to go one more time. Okay, all right. Back to where you were. Yeah, okay. Back to where you were. We were just telling you to be alert that you're going to start again. All right. Somebody drop that needle on for me, please. Oh, I better tell you where. Do you want to call us from over there? 
I put Bill on the spot. This is a toughie. And uh, you guys are getting experience with a dance we might call complicated. But it's fun to have a taste of this. First lady cast, follow up man. That's straight up. That's not what I want. I dropped it on the wrong band. Try again. Okay, first lady cast, man foul. Straight across. Go below one more. Promenade up the center. Cast off. With the one below and the other hand turn. With the ones above, you start with the right. Now two ladies chain and flare. And you plug her wheel. Off, man, follow. Go below one. Cast again, you. Yeah. Art, I think you're out. Promenade up the middle. Yeah, cast off. With the other hand below, turn. And with the ones above, star by the right, star right, star right. Two ladies chain, men flare. Now flutter wheel. And a right below three. Ready on the head. Follow. Go below one, straight across the set. Go below another. Into the middle and promenade up. Cast off. Go to the next one below, and the other hand turn. Go to the ones below, above, star right. Star right. And the ladies chain. And flutter wheel. And a right left through. Same head, ladies. Gen follow. Straight across. Down below one. Up the center. That other couple forgot they got to wait out. Cast. Go one below, star turn. One's above, star right. We're going to blow it here. <laughs> Ladies chain. Flutter wheel, I think, is where we're supposed to be. I think what happened was uh, one couple got to the bottom, but they didn't recognize the fact, and we we're, don't blame you for this, that you you achieved your resting point instead of trying to continue dancing as an active couple one more time. That's what happened. All right. Thank you, partners. I'm sorry. That's all we got. Thank, thank you, Bill. Um, we've got 15 more minutes, and we thought we'd uh, dance with you uh, a little bit more, but sit down first and see if we can field any questions. Uh, yes, Fred, would you come over and take the mic? Not away, but just up to it. <coughs> I have read several places <clears throat> of the value of using a different, oh, excuse me, of the value of using, not, uh, I've read several places of the value of not using a regular hoedown, like up the creek or, or something like that. But to use a, a uh, piece of music that is adaptable to contours, is there any merit in that statement? And if so, how? Let's ask the uh, panel. Uh, Lanny, what's your feeling on using? I don't have any strong feeling on it, unless it's a, a matter of whether the music feels good for the contra. One argument I heard against it was, Contras are not square dances. We're trying to impress upon the people that they are something special. So maybe they need a special music instead of just using the same music that you use for square dancing. However, as I say, I don't have any strong feeling one way or the other except for the fact that some feel like they belong to Contras and some don't. Let me uh, ask the same question. Excuse me. Let me ask the same question of Bill and then Art. Uh, I don't say I have a strong feeling, but when I'm working with beginners, their first time, I will very often use a square dance hoedown, but one that is very well phrased, and you don't find many of them today. I, the ones I use are old, 
mm-hmm. but they were phrased. However, it's kind of a, a bridge for the square dancer. He at least mm-hmm. has something that's reasonably familiar in the feel of a hoedown music. And the only thing that's new to him is the phrasing. And he doesn't really notice that because he's so busy following me, giving him his calls with a right and left through it. But before he knows it, he's following that hoedown music to the phrase. And that's what we're t- uh, trying to accomplish. That's the secret of the whole thing is the phrasing, is it not? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, Yes, that's the secret of the whole thing you're phrasing. I feel exactly as Bill does in this case, that we uh, should uh, make it as easy for square dancers to become contra dancers as we do for them to become square dancers. And if we give them something that they're familiar with, fine. Thank you. Uh, yes, Lanny. I don't mean to imply that I don't use any Western square dance music. In fact, when I first began, not knowing whether I was going to make a go of this thing or not, before I went out and bought a lot of records, I stole from my husband's case. So my first were all Western square dance music, and then I have added more since. And also there are many um, singing calls that can be used very well with your contra dancing. Uh, give us an example of a singing call that uh, you might use for contras. Oh, summer sounds. Uh, when you are a tulip, uh, let a smile be your umbrella. Uh, sunshine follows you. Bill, you have Many some? more. That's all that comes to my mind. Uh, yeah, if I'm going to use a singing call for contra, I, I don't mean this as a flat statement, but very frequently... I'll take one where the melodic line of the singing call is not all that strong, but there's a good phrase nevertheless. As, for example, uh, one I use frequently is Gren Nock. It's about four or five years old. And another one is uh, Daisy a Day. I think it's uh, Blue Star, if I'm not mistaken. But in other words, if I'm going to use a singing call record for Contra, and I, I do it, I, I pick one where the melodic line is not so melodic, if you understand what I mean, but it's still a phrased record. A couple of other good ones that I like are Best Things in Life are Free. Uh, I use Whispering on an old balance label, which is a little hard to get now since Ed Gilmore is dead. Uh... And then there's an old one, I forget what label it's on, called Silver Dollar. Uh, it's got yeah. a Jerry good... Lewis, yeah. Jerry Lewis, on... Uh, what was that? Joe Lewis? Joe Lewis. Jay Barrell. Huh? Yeah. Jay Barrell. No? No, it wasn't... No, Sam, Joe, Joe Lewis is... Uh, but it, it makes a good, uh, a good singing call to do the contra to. Uh, what about Shacklet? Do you uh, use some of them? It's worth trying out at home the record before you try it. Once in a while, you'll find a record that uh, zooms off in the middle of it, and it may not be as good. Yes, Bill? Another thought along the same lines, though. Uh, one night at a dance, contra dance, with regular contra dancers, I used that, what is it, summertime dream or summer dream. I also used uh, Real Madrid, and I also used something about my Mary Oldsmobile. I used all those three in the same program. My dancers complained. They said, if I wanted to go to a square dance, I would have gone to a square dance. I think on that score, too, sometimes if you're working with contemporary dancers who are accustomed to not dancing with phrase, that you, you're apt to get them doing the same things to the same music in a contra. And uh, it depends on the caller. If the caller really insists on good timing, it works a little bit different. Uh, God bless America. It, it works real great. We've got a, uh, a couple of, what do you call four couple facing around, uh, I was going to say a soldier's joy type of thing. Uh, but there are some, some of those that we use, and the God Bless America works just terrifically. Yes, sir. Um, on using, I'm always a little afraid that some of the square dancers, well, Art likes to use something about your baby, and he's had a lot of success with it. I'm always a little afraid to do that because I think that 
something about your baby is one of these things that they, you know, it means one particular great square dance to all these people. And I'm afraid that if we do something other than what they're used to, they may think, oh, what a, what a downer this is. And um, it, it just may turn them off. But some of these others are great, like Real Madrid, and some of these are fantastic. Um, Yes, uh, would you grab the mic, uh, Stu, please? The voice you're about to hear is Stu Shacklett in person. Yeah. One of the ones that I use, a uh, little thing she did to Ashton Polka, I use Charlie's Polka to it. Oh, that's on great. Kalox, and that's fantastic. That's Gives also good for, for banjo yeah. contra, which is, is sensational. The people go crazy. Absolutely. Gaga. The, the music is so great. I was trying to think of the other one that they, uh, they do. Oh, the old quiet dance. Did you mention uh, quiet dance? Yeah. Uh, that, that is sensational for a sing call. Yes, sir. Uh, one other thing you might try, I, I've done this with uh, the banjo polka. At Christmas time or some other holiday, you might try something like the uh, Christmas polka. And I use that, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so, yeah you can put these. We, we it, do it's s- easier to do than, uh, right. than the regular Charlie's polka. Po- Charlie's polka is great, but that Christmas time, this has worked. We use live music for our Christmas party. Be right with you. And uh, the live music, we go t- uh, two time, oh, let's see, four times through a jig on something like a broken sixpence. And then the band, without stopping or segue, goes right into Jingle Bells. And, and we just continue right on the same pattern, and everybody's singing, and it just goes great. Yes? Uh, Betsy got it. If you um, have a group that you're using contras with who round dance, or who include a lot of round dancers, I haven't heard this afternoon anyone mention waltzing. You can waltz contra, and I have written a contra and robbed my husband's round dance case to find a piece of waltz music which it timed with. Great. Great, and, and waltz contras are fun. There are several of them. The one that comes to mind is Hills of Habersham, has been one that so many of us uh, grew up with. Um, the gentleman who asked the, or made a statement a little bit earlier uh, about uh, doing a Portland Fancy, which, isn't that a mescalanza? It is, isn't it? Um, I don't know whether he's still here, but uh, just a, a quick little experience. I did a uh, choreography with a man named Nick Castle on a uh, MGM film a number of years ago with Judy Garland and Gene Kelly. And uh, they had me come in and show about a half a dozen different dances of different forms that uh, might possibly work in choreographically with the action in that particular scene. And if you ever catch it on the late, 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 late show sometime, uh, you'll notice that they're doing the Portland Fancy. Of all the things that they watched, the pattern in the Portland Fancy had the variation and the fun and the progressive movement from when we did that in a big circle. And it, it fit in real well. Summerstock, Judy Gar- Garland, Gene Kelly. Uh, are there any other questions? I just want to compliment the the panel. They they were given no direct charge, and they they uh, fielded it by ear. And Bill even got up and did one uh, ad lib. Art got up and did an ad lib deal, not knowing that you might like to do one in a circle. But contras and quadrilles offer that variety that so many times we lack. And one of the distressing things to do in Contras is to notice that people are smiling. And I don't think you're supposed to have a good time in dancing, are you? <laughs> but, but really, you can smile on the beat. And it's really great. Are there any other questions before we go?